is up, Robot Wars fans? Hardcore Kid here with another edition of the Hardcore Podcast. No Nate tonight. He had work commitments, so... But fortunately, I'm not going to be doing it alone, because I have two guests with me tonight. As always, determined to make Matilda his robot waifu, we have Alex the Hunted. Uh, no, that's Jonathan Pierce. Oh... God. I'm, I'm, Sorry, I'll edit that in post. Yeah, that's... Determined to make Matilda his robot waifu, we have Jonathan Pace. <laughs> ah! And, <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, we have another uh, roboteer tonight who Woo! competed on tonight's episode. Yes. Uh, he competed tonight with Vulture, a brand new machine. He, uh, <laughs> he's fought with a few featherweights on the live circuit, but this is his first time in the war zone. It is Adam Hamilton. Hello, everyone. Uh, you might want to turn this off after hearing my voice. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> good, luck awesome, everyone, good, good luck, everyone from America, trying to understand the Newcastle accent. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fine. I'll uh, I'll probably include subtitles or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. We were supposed to have Craig Dan be on, but uh, unfortunately, he's he and uh, Jason from Team Thor are in Russia for an event, Currently, so he can't uh, get yeah, Skype. That's probably the last we're going to see of them. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> yeah, after tonight's episode, I don't know if we're ever going to hear from Craig again. <laughs> Certainly not but, from uh, Apex. <laughs> I feel yeah, so he... bad about that. <laughs> so, Heat, Heat C, this was um, the middle of the road for Series 10. We uh, So far, we have had Behemoth, who, after 19 years, finally made it to the promised land of the Grand Final. And, of course, we had Carbide, our reigning champion, in there to visit him. Didn't have an easy and, uh, round, tonight... Carbide, but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, t- tonight we, we uh, saw some old faces, and we also saw some new faces. And um, one of the new faces, actually a very, very big face, was, in fact, Bucky the Robot. Also oh. known as the Biter Bot. What do you guys think of this beast? God, I love it. <laughs> it is Give nice hugs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have I've actually heard rumor somebody said that the person wearing that Bucky costume is George Francis from the Chaos Two team. Oh come on, no it wouldn't be. <laughs> I highly doubt that, but I can confirm they are probably that's not really confirmation. Naked underneath. <laughs> Jeez. Probably wearing a a, a a flesh-colored bodysuit. Thank, thank God it wasn't recorded in. Not what the kids bought these days. Thank, thank God it wasn't recorded in winter, where you just have the frozen corpse of, of, of uh, Bucky, Bucky's mascot. Uh, um, people thought it looked uh, kind of scary, and uh, I don't know, it looks kind of cute, don't you think? It's cute in a kind of horrifying way. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I now, goddamn I'm... love it, though. I, I love the robot as well, because. I guess I've said before, Robot Wars needs robots like this. We don't just like even we don't just want like a, a wedge flipper and a two wheel drive spinner. Robot Wars needs stuff like this. I mean, yeah, and uh, this is what I really actually what I really enjoy about this episode was that there was a variety of some really interesting designs here. Obviously, Bucky had the big mouth. Vulture had the flywheel on the arm. Apex had his big spinning blade of death and murder and uh traction was a track was a actually from what i found out recently it was an it's an ex-bomb disposal robot wow yep yeah it certainly looks like it but um it's a shame that bucky didn't do too well but in what we saw of it it, it really it was really entertaining to look at i want to see bucky too i i hope i hope we do and i'm sure we will we, it's got to have like a movie title sequel name it's got to be called bucky 2 Judgment Day. Boogie that, sounds, that sounds like a spin-off. Oh, that sounds like a spin-off to a Captain America film, doesn't it? Oh, Bucky wait, I just thought of it. Bucky 2, Electric Boogaloo. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, Adam, what do you think of Bucky the Biter Bot? It is amazing. Like You look at it and you think, oh, that's not effective, but you have to appreciate how much of a work of art it is. Yeah. I mean, Gorgeous. I mean, even though it... Wasn't it was overweight because it was originally supposed to have back armor and it clearly didn't. Mm. I was a little bit worried about that because when I'm looking at the machine and I keep thinking, 
I don't know. This this could end up being the next napalm. Just things oh, flying no, it, off. Oh come on! It, it, it's actually because it's it's actually built well. So you know. Yeah, this one was actually solid. I, I don't even recall anything flying off of it. it, the, it the only thing it held up really the well. The only problem really was again was probably the wheels because they weren't really connected. So they, they you could see it in fights like those parts were just bending and flexing, and sometimes they just it lost traction because it bent too much. Well, it's, it's actually stock mounted, so as they call it in America, the whoops. Yeah. Um, it's so whatever hits it gets, it sort of cushions. So it was like having suspension that was really, really floppy. Yeah. I will I say, I will, I will, I will give them secure. kudos for one thing though. That they got NPC motors going on in there, and those are like, remember, remember when uh, everybody was using Bosch 750s? Yeah. Oh God. N NPC NPC wheelchair motors is what virtually every heavyweight robot is using now. Last Rites uses them, I think. Uh, Aftershock. Aftershock. Uh, nope. Aftershock uses scooter motors. They're the new craze over here in the UK. Oh, yeah, that's what it them is, yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, and uh, all the uh, loner bots in, in Battle of the Stars used NPC. And uh, considering how many of them got destroyed, I don't think NPC was They're too happy They're cheap and easy, to <laughs> and easy to replace. Absolutely. But yeah, that, that was Bucky. And... Um, I think uh, since you're here, Adam, we shall move on to your machine, Vulture. What can you tell you us didn't. about this beast? Well, what can I say? It's not really a beast as such. It's, um, well, we need to stay away from the full flipper. It's, 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 cur <laughs> it's currently a fledgling. That's all else. You know, it hasn't, it hasn't become the full Vulture yet. No, well, I, th I think that egg has been hatched and it's now, well, it's been proven to be really rotten. <laughs> um... <laughs> the actual chassis design is based on my featherweight amnesia, which did well. Yeah. So I thought, right, we'll we'll do that. Um, we know it works. We know we know it can like give the experienced teams a bit of hassle, and we'll plonk a really rubbish weapon on top. I don't know what happened there. Yeah. But... <laughs> that's what that's what I just say. Like the the robot held together really well. Is what I had to say. Massive but... afterthought. Pardon? We changed so much during the build phase. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I noticed is that um, usually when you have uh, sp uh, spinning weapons with arms on them, uh, usually they're they're like saw blades. They kind of, kind of like a uh, Megatron or saw blades or any of those big uh, dust can bots you see. And uh, I, I was wondering how effective is uh, uh, the flywheel going to work? And to its credit, it managed to get some hits on uh, some of the bots. But of course, it ends. Took yeah. a few chunks out of things, but yeah. overall, um, we had. A few problems after our first fight. Oh, it, well, it was it was just rubbish. Was, yeah. was the was the weapon actually wasn't was the weapon belt driven? Because I was because I was looking at it, it looked like it was belt driven instead of chain. Not the actual yeah, it arm, had the two actual, yeah. belts. So um, when the disc hits stuff, it, it, the force of its stopping wouldn't jolt back and kill the motor, so right. it'd be slip. I see. Um, it, except you can see the belts kind of pop off. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, kind of rubbish. Happened to Apex. But you know what? <laughs> it, I will say it was a good first attempt, and again, it, it was certainly one of the more creative designs in this episode. And you know, it's always good good to have uh, new and interesting designs. Like uh, like Alex said, um, uh, sometimes it gets a bit boring seeing like the regular two wheel drive flippers and whatnot. And you, you've built you've built something that um, I, I think could be improved, but I would like to see more of it. Yeah, really. I, def is, I yeah. don't know if you're gonna if your sequel bot's gonna be called named after a different bird, but I don't know. Call it the peregrine falcon or something like that. <laughs> the to be dropped because, well, yeah, yeah, what I said before, it's rotten. It's rubbish. Yeah, and we've had so many memes being made about it. Oh god. <laughs> Speaking of memes, you, you know what a, a, a recurring uh, theme about this episode was? If you look closely, you can see Team Toad stickers everywhere. <laughs> Um, if, if you don't, if you, for those of you who don't know what the Team Toad stickers are, basically um, there's a guy who uh, Mike, Mike Michelin, I, I, uh, I sometimes pr pronounce his name wrong, but he, he's the uh, he's the captain of Team Toad here in America. He competed on BattleBots a few times with Frostbite and whatnot, and he always uh, supplied um, stickers like t like big round white stickers with a picture of a toad on them. Craig had one. I, I'm pretty sure Craig was the one toting everybody because he, he frequently comes to Robo Games. But he, he'd have a. Th there was a few stickers. There was one on Apex. There was one on Craig's shirt. There was one on Traction. And 
I don't Traction know if we'll probably have one. Traction had a lot of stickers. They had Apollo, they had Concussion, they had Team Toad. Uh, who else? Yeah, there's a few teams that arrived with stickers. And I, and I be- oh yeah, the Carbide team, I believe, had a Team Toad sticker on their toolbox, so. Yeah. Way to represent! But, to the, but yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know what you're planning for your next robot. I mean, here's hope. I want to see you guys come back, because, you know, you, you got to represent the North. Yeah, yeah um, well, there's something in the works. Yeah. I will admit that. Completely new machine, completely, well-ish, different team. <laughs> so it's sort of a mashup going on. Um, so, yeah, something to look forward to, if it works. And oh. I say if because, well... Thank you, Bob So, so is, is Vulture basically just now going to be in a corner in the garage? The bird is dead. It's been ah. roasted in the oven. It's been eaten. There's nothing left but bones. Oh, oh what a shame. Oh, well. Hey, yeah, Vul- Vulture. The it, it was a good, good a, a decent first attempt. He managed to get Bucky out. And um, I guess Look. we shall move on. Uh, do we want to talk about Apex? Yes. Let's it's talk about Apex. <laughs> Good grief! <laughs> they Apex. spent. They were. Ju- they were in. They were in this episode just as much as they were last series. <laughs> well, it's a massive shame that I mean they've built an awesome robot. It's always been really threatening. Like they just take it to live events, and their presence is just like. Oh, I mean, keep is, it away. isn't this the only spinner that is not allowed to be tested in the actual ro- uh, weapons testing area? It has to be tested in the arena. It's one of a few. But, wow. But it's but like, it's, it's... It's nasty. It's a, <laughs> yeah, Exactly. It's, when the weapon weight alone is about a third of the robot. Yeah. It's, it's just, You don't want that hitting you in the back of the head. No. Sometimes, sometimes it kind of shows that sometimes bigger isn't always better. Like, uh, you look at, uh, oh, Ironside 3... It has a big blade, but it's not, like, big McLarge huge like uh, Apex's blade, which I don't know if you're a wrestling fan, Adam, but uh, is it me or does Apex's weapon kind of look like the Jeff Hardy symbol, like the uh, smaller version? I have no idea. Maybe but <laughs> Some people said it looks like a guitar. It looks like a It looks like a guitar. The, 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 I believe it was modeled to look like a, a guitar. Yeah, it is. Some did it also job on that it looks gorgeous yeah i once killed a boy with a fender guitar <laughs> i don't remember if it was a telecaster or a stratocaster but i do know that it wasn't at all easy it was Which attached to apex <laughs> 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 oh, yeah crickets <laughs> but yeah what a mo- what a monster this thing is like last year uh, me and nate uh, we made a prediction that apex was either gonna Cause damage or self-destruct spectacularly, and in a way, it did both. It waited. <laughs> it caused a lot of damage. It, it did it itself. And, uh, <laughs> my God! And then, and then uh, Craig got especially angry and decided to smash the window. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, Apex. I mean, like I said, um, the first fight it didn't really do much because the weapon belt broke in one hit. <laughs> Bolt flew off. Yeah. First it was not. Now it was a bolt, or bolt, no? Yeah, the bolt blew off, and you can also see in the slow mo the belt also came loose. Yeah. So that was basically it. And Apex isn't really, you know, it's it's the ultimate the of it's it's the ultimate of it's the ultimate um, of well, when the bar when the weapon isn't working, then the robot's kind of useless. I don't know. Yeah. It, it hung in there. It managed to outlast Vulture, <laughs> but uh... we were still moving, but. Yeah, we were just going to wreck our motors so far, right? Well, normally yeah. We're normally going to go through to another fight anyway, so yeah. Just yeah. stop it. But well, good, yeah, it good. almost stayed in there till the end of the fight, but Terahertz has been nasty this year. Oh, it, yeah. It's finally think, good uh, to see Terahertz back in form. Yeah, well, let's move on to Terahertz, shall we? Because whew, this is the best Terahertz I've seen in years. Since this thing was six. Just and... nasty. There's yeah. one reason why, one main reason. It was Wasn't warm. Freezing. Warm weather. It was warm. It was it, it was, was filmed in May. It deep. was filmed in May. And I think that's why Series 11 hasn't been announced yet, because they don't want to do another winter series, because 
that's what, one of the main things that held back Series 9. Yeah, because all, all the flippers were all freezing up, axes were freezing up. Mm. But, yeah, t- Terahertz was just... Uh, Nick Lynch, he, he was definitely uh, getting some good hits in today. I know la- last year he was just waiting for a good hit, waiting for a good hit. This year he just went crazy on you guys. He was it making was... up for two series of not much hit, not many hits. <laughs> but... Well, uh, and, and well, technically three since series seven it didn't get a hit at all because it failed to get into the arena. Dear <laughs> Lord, but it's, it's so nice to see Terahertz back in action. I mean, obviously, yeah, Terahertz has been performing. It's been the FRA champion once. Yeah, um, but... twice. I'm just going to be that annoying person who corrects you. <laughs> yeah. It's been the FRA Championship twice, uh, uh, and it's just—I mean, yeah, I mean, yes, Terahertz is 15 years old now, but it's still got it. It's always been really unlucky, but John has finalised that design yeah. to a T. It's perfect in warm weather. <laughs> and the good news is, uh, even though it lost in the heat final, it's not out because it's into the uh, big ten-way, which should be phenomenal. So. Oh, I'm sure you it is. Oh, <laughs> oh it's definitely, it's, uh, I mean, it's definitely building up to it. I mean, you've got, uh, should we, I mean, the next robot that we're probably going to talk about is also in it. And, I mean, they're really excited to be in the 10-way, but Jesus Christ, with the other robots they're in with, I don't think there's going to be much left. Yeah, it is. Uh, th- this is This is a robot I like to call Suicidal Tendencies Redux. It's Traction, which was... The team is from Collingwood School. They were all uh, they were all mentored by Will Thomas. Yep, and I'm surprised they didn't bring that up at all in the episode. Although I, I did see Will Thomas made a little uh, cameo towards the end when Angela's talking to him. He's like in the very bottom right corner, smiling. He's like, "Oh hey, we managed to get through to the." Uh, My students uh, did better than me. <laughs> yeah, well, honestly, there isn't really a whole lot to say about traction because. They didn't really do much, to be honest. I mean, in the match against Apex, uh, it took a couple hits with your wedge, Adam. <laughs> and then um, it held up, and then, uh, unfortunately... Uh, That's a well-made wedge. It's a very strong wedge. What's it made out of? It's made out of Hot Ox 500, I believe, 10 millimeters thick. So Which, that's, uh, it did that's the like job. parts possible. It, it, one of the thickest wedges in the sport. Yeah. So, that was your spinner killer, wasn't it, wedge? Oh yes, wedge. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. a life without wedge. What is it? Nothing. <laughs> but yeah, tr- traction. I will. I will say. Uh, it, it. It is an okay first attempt. It just ha- got some really. You could say some good luck and also some bad luck because in that first match, it just got ganged up on by, by the spikes, the fog of war, by rapid. It, it was just insanity right from the but- start. But all I say is, like, considering that other teams, like, you know, um, uh, team, uh, uh, like, um, like Overdozer and Worm, they were robots built in a hurry, and the yeah. attraction's an ex-military uh, vehicle, uh, an ex-bomb disposal vehicle. It did very well. Yeah, and uh, I, I, it, um, I would like to, hopefully, I don't know if it's going to be, if they are going to get the Crusher in action, but I would like to see uh, it do something with it. It's not a very good Crusher. They, it's, I, is... I, I take a, I, I took a good look at it. It looks like the Crusher you'd see, I said this before, but it looks like the Crusher uh, that you see on Fang in Robot Wars Arenas of Destruction. It looks like that's what it was but based it, on. It does, but they, I mean, they, it was cut from the interview. When the Angela was in, interviewing them, they, they, they'd said it's basically for grabbing. It's not really much of a Crusher. Yeah. It's but, like uh, on, oh. on top of someone's head. Yeah. But it looked really cool, and the kids did really well. Yeah, I'm they had proud such a good attitude about it as about it as well. Like, yeah, they were better talking the camera than I was. Yeah, <laughs> they can cut a promo. This is these are these guys are probably one of the one of the most important teams to appear on Robot Wars because they're a bunch of not even well barely teenagers who have built a robot and they're here in Robot Wars and they're in you know they're in the ten way melee so it just proves that. I mean, unlike what Rapid said, that you'd need a lot of money to win, you don't. I mean, uh, look look how it's in the 10-way melee. It's, this is a team that we need in Robot Combat because it inspires the next generation because it, it shows them they can do it already. Absolutely. 
Speaking of rapid, I think uh, we should move on to our uh, heat winner. And I'm going to be perfectly honest here. Rapid is a beautifully engineered machine. I'm going to cool. say that right now. It's a fantastically built machine. But Don't know. if you ever seen the insides of it, it's just I've whoo. seen the gearboxes. It's Issues. craziness. But I still feel like I kind of wish they could have maybe made it look a bit more flashy. Because to me, wasn't enough for you. I it, well, if if you can have like a these big blue, big blue flip spinners and flippers and all kinds of crazy paint jobs we saw in this episode. I feel like they could have at least given it a bit more character because it just seems like a dulled down turbulence in a way. I, I feel like if they had given it maybe some paint or maybe a, a bit of some uh, cr- uh, crazy designs on the flipper or something, but no. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, Rapid Rapid did... Well, obviously, it was the heat winner. It did, it did well, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't as fun as a win as like how Bear Moth or um, a, a Carbide had its had its wins. This was a very, I mean, you could see it from yourself. What they said, they, they just basically just went for the Azure Arena, and that was it. And you know, it's if you go for the Azure Arena, that's fine. But if you only go for the out of the arena, it just becomes it's not boring. It, uh, sorry, it's boring. In a way, mm-hmm. because like you saw in some of the f- matches, like against the, in the heat final against Terahertz, it never flipped Terahertz when it wasn't next to the wall. Of course, uh, that they had in the second round, they had to get uh, traction OOTA because they had a gas leak, and that they wanted to get it over and done with because they didn't uh, want the flipper to crap out on them. I don't well, know. It's, I don't- it's a pretty awkward situation because you know it's a TV show. And, yeah. you know, you're there to entertain everyone. But you need to win. Yeah. You sort of forget that whole sort of, oh, let's put the God Show thing out, like being that nice guy, and you just you just go for it. Yeah. And sometimes that just ruins everything. It is a shame. Like, in our fight with Bucky, I'll keep referring to myself, won't I? Um, I keep doing it. Nope. <laughs> in our fight with Bucky, like, we could have done more. I would want to go around the back and get the blade spinning up and whack its motors, something nasty like that. But it could be knocked back over and it could self-right and then we could have a random breakdown. And hmm. this is the big leagues. You can't really risk losing that much when you roll what's rubbish anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Vulture! Oh, come on. Well, stop hitting it. Vulture's good. You were unlucky. It wasn't that Vulture was bad. It was bad. It's a good start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, but, I mean, I do... Uh, I mean, I, I kind of disagree with what... Um, I forget what his name, the captain of uh, Rapid said. Uh, I forget his name. But, we, you know, we said, like, there's a correlation between... Spe- yeah, but they said there's a correlation between spending money and winning Robot Wars. Need I remind you that Chaos 2 cost less than a grand and it won the series twice? 250 quid. It helps yeah, when you know how, much does rap, how much does rapid cost now? Like thirty grand now? Well, I looked up. I looked up how much gold plate, uh, like how much gold plate, uh, actual gold paints plated stuff costs to get it done properly, and it's it's like five grand. Jesus, I am um, the front wedgelets, the, the two corner wedges. Yeah, yeah. So in America, you'll know how much well tool steel costs. It is a bomb to get it machined and everything. <sighs> No one over here has got the you know pockets deep enough for that, but Maybe they... he did, and he's got six of them, I think. Just what? It's maybe it's... he broke into Fort Knox and stole a few blocks of gold. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I know they said like, oh, Mort- Mortis was the most expensive robot on Robot Wars, which was it was it was a lie. That was a lie because it wasn't thirty grand; it was something like five. But um, but eight hey, rapid is. By far and away, the most expensive robot ever on Robot Wars. Very much. And I, I, I'm just not, I'm just not falling in love with it. I mean, it's, I respect it. It's kind of like how Nate is now, uh, not Nate, um, Anderson feels about Razor. He's like he respects it, but he doesn't love it. Yeah, and Nate, uh, he, he, uh, he liked to consider Rapid the Mortis of uh, the current generation because it's expensively built, but. What's going to happen when uh, something goes wrong with it? And la- last year, the uh, 
the gearboxes went off with it, and because it was so advancedly engineered, they, they couldn't fix it in time. I believe they fixed that. They made it all modular, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but, but, they, but, this year, but, but this year they're having the problem of the air, of the air leak. Yeah, and the, that's why they had to get that second match over and done with. It is such a tight system. I mean, because it's made with expensive materials, the slightest little bump on the insides can sort of dislodge things. But, yeah, the, the problem that some of the other roboteers have with it, not me personally, but um, you look inside and it's gorgeous, all expensive machine. People think, oh, I wish I had the money to do that. I would make things look beautiful. And then he bolted loads of armor to it and just made it look like a doorstop. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that is what the other roboteers have a problem with it. But I think if you're going to go for a win and you want to do it out of your own money, then that's fair. Um, well, yeah, I mean, if you're going to spend all that money, you got to make you got to make sure it, it, it it's going to win. But like I said, like it's it's just the way it's just the four wheel drive push wedge flipper. Yeah. At least give it a paint job, you know. Exactly. I think now that we've got all the bots out of the way, we'll talk about the matches. And some of them were uh, over pretty quickly, and some of them uh, weren't. <laughs> and uh, we'll start off with the first melee, which was Bucky versus. Rapid versus Traction. All I'm going to say about this fight, uh, this first one, it, it felt very much like the robot. There was one really high tier robot just put in with two mid, with like two lower tier robots. Like I feel like uh, one of the robots from the next group battle should have been swapped out. Yeah. With another one to make it more even. This, this was basically like Rapid was getting a pass in this match since. But both machines obviously were were outclassed, and Rapid was just gonna. It seemed like Rapid. Um, I don't know if they they were having a gas leak or not, but they they spent like the second half just toying with Bucky. I think. Yeah. It was, I think it was it, it, Sorry. It's it's a game of rock paper scissors basically. Mm -hmm. Like even if you get the rock and everyone else has got scissors, it depends on how hard your rock is. Yeah. So you're looking at cheaply, but well, cheap by comparison, traction. Um, you got a next step up to that, which it, it's the buggy's nicely machined, but yeah. it's got a gimmicky weapon. I mean, it's beautiful, it works fantastically, but it's not a winning weapon. It hasn't been proven in the past with other machines. Rapid I would, I would say, I would weapon. Say, I would say the only thing that was really holding Bucky's weapon back was the wedge. The front wedge was far too steep. Yeah, yeah. that and wasn't touching the ground at all. Yeah, that too. <laughs> but I mean, but, um, you, you know what? Uh, you know what? Uh, both losers of this match, they neither of them were technically beaten by Rapid. They were, in fact, beaten by the absolutely overpowered Floor Dildos. <laughs> and uh, if you watch Mr. Psycho's uh, review show, you know what I'm referencing. But uh, the Floor Spikes. Yeah, the, both both robots got taken out by the Floor Spikes. All, also taken out by. You know what the first thing I wrote uh, on this match was? Fog of War, Fog of War sucks. And. You're gonna you're gonna see uh, fog of war sucks written out a lot. In, God, it was more. It was used more times than. Oh my! Of... It was used way too many times. Twice was too much. It, I mean, it got used twice in one match. I mean, I'm not saying a word. <laughs> it's like um, it, it's. What about saying that this match does have some good moments? I mean, like um, rapid obviously getting it. It's 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 first out of the arena on traction. Um, which was which was nice, and also I really did like the moment where Bucky basically just they flipped Bucky into the wall, and Bucky just took a just started biting into it. It <laughs> bit onto the wall, and that helped itself right. That it was, that was amazing. It was literally chewing on the scenery. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, not, not not much happened after tra after traction went out. Uh, Bucky was getting flipped around. It went up against the wall, but it uh, was able to grab on and self right. And then it got hit by the floor spikes again, and that was basically they ran out of the gas. Which, I mean, also you, you know, it's with the Bucky that they have um, they have an air horn. The air horn went. Yeah, I, I keep I kept hearing this out uh, all throughout. Yeah, that's the I, air horn it, for Bucky's it, weapon. Yeah. Um, uh, also, another point I like to make about this episode is like Angela l fell in love with Bucky immediately. Oh. Like she was just she was egging this thing on throughout the whole fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, she got to go uh, right right after the match. She just gave the mascot a big old hug. 
But, it, was, it was funny when when you see uh, right, right towards the very end, uh, you, you see uh, the 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 mascot and Dara just walking away sadly, hand in hand. That just... thing would not. Yeah, it's like Dara, basically they they kind of cut it a lot. That joke, that running joke that they, that Dara had going mostly throughout the episode is that Dara kept on trying to talk to it and he just wouldn't respond to it. Nah. <laughs> Well, hopefully, if they have the DVD, they'll include some deleted scenes. Well, Hope I mean, not. <laughs> well, it was it also it wasn't shown in this episode, but um, what also happened was Bucky um, got got a hold of Gabe from Team Sabretooth and started skipping down the walkway together. Oh, they should they should have showed that. Maybe they'll maybe they'll show it in a highlight reel in the grand final or something. They must. They must. But uh, yeah, that that was the first match. It was basically all rapid, but. Um, so we'll move on to the second match, which is Apex versus Terahertz versus Vulture. Now, from what I understand... Um, from me. No, no, actually, uh, from, what, from what I understand, uh, a few years back, um, when Craig was driving Tanto, he actually broke Terahertz's axe off. Yep. <laughs> like, like, a, yeah, like, like, apparently he was wha- uh, whacking away at Tanto and... But Tanto was just like made of solid hardox, and it just caused the axe to snap off. Every axe it was very goes old. eventually. It was really funny from the sounds of it. There's yeah. plenty of pictures on the internet. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't that axe sold off on the uh, TR2 eBay charity? I think so. Yeah. Because I tried yeah, one was. the first one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every it's it's basically an axe will. It'll it will go eventually. Every axe will go eventually. Like just how like every CO two system eventually the piston will will go. Like every axe will bend will end up just taking warp it warp, keep on warping to eventually it'll slap. I mean like it happened to four uh, a few months back. Um, and it's <laughs> but yeah this this was a I was there for this recording of this fight and Ter- terahertz was just vicious in this match just. <laughs> Just whacking you guys so hard, just yeah. sending sparks flying. It was like we couldn't this... drive properly. If we did, we could have caused mayhem. Yeah. Yeah. You were yeah, <laughs> the, you last now, week, but that, 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 but that being said, like this, what well, again? They didn't show it, but uh, this match was halted because the first six seconds of this fight, terahertz. Uh, Apex got up, spun up to speed. Terahertz rammed it into the wall and broke off the arena pa- the wall panel. Oh. And in the, uh, Causing the match to be ended prematurely, and the the producers just went, "Yeah, that match didn't happen, so don't reference it at all." Yeah, I, I heard that the match had to be uh, the match went six seconds and had to be stopped, and I'm like, "Really?" And uh, yeah, uh, John Reed apparently wanted to get some turnabouts fair play and try to break uh, Apex's blade off, which he managed to get the little washer nut off, and Apex was pretty much screwed the rest of the match. Um, and then all three of you guys got stuck, which was pretty funny to see. We were all giving each other hugs. Uh, yeah. This is all, all, all is fair in love and war. Let, let's not fight anymore. Let's just have a big hug. What I will say, what I will say is that, um, Vulture is very good at getting Terahertz's axe stuck. Because that happened twice. <laughs> yeah. in, that happened what? twice in this episode. Their axe was hitting our wedge, and instead of their axe denting the wedge, the wedge was cutting through their axe head. So that's how it was getting stuck. Yeah, because mm. the fir- the, in the first fight, they had to re- I believe they had to replace the axe head because of how much damage it took from hitting um, hitting Vulture. <laughs> so, hey, it now, makes your robot's good for something. It's the uh, I break your fist on my face root, um, technique. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I do have one pet peeve about this match, and it's a rule that's been around since 2000. It's what I like to call the one-wheel immobilization rule. Vulture lost drive in one wheel, so it was basically going around in circles. And so it was deemed immobile, and so they had to count it out. This, Robot Wars, is the only event I have seen where this rule applies. Why does it still exist? It's basically well, so... mobile. I mean, it wasn't moving any way outside that circle, so... It's basically got to move outside of its own circumference. I mean, you can ha- you can still have one wheel working and still be deemed mobile. I mean, we've had- it's happened a few times, like um, PP3D versus Eruption. Uh, um, what Pulse. else? What? Pulsar. Yeah, Pulsar. Yeah. Drum to sort of, you know... Gyro Walk. Not, mon- 
my, 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 my robot Mondo has actually won matches just by driving around in circles. But, I have no idea how. But yeah, it's 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 not that the, it's not that if one wheel's if one wheel's done, then your robot's out. It's more the case of like you have to be able, you can't just be able to drive in circles because obviously the t- it, it it does really make it make a good television if your robot's just spinning yeah, going around true. in circles. So yeah, but you know what? Thank God for double elimination, right? So you yeah. get you get a second chance. The the losers all end up in the uh, redemption rounds. Terra Hertz gets the victory. Uh, Apex ended up smoking at the end, and then of course we got Craig Danby's heel turn, and what a heel turn it was! I thought, I thought he was in Series Eight because he was a he, he was a heel in Series Eight with uh, Foxic. Yep, and then he was a baby face in Series Nine. He showed up in his Foxic onesie. I'm sorry, not onesie hoodie, and here he he was in full rage mode. He was cursing. He got bleeped, and then uh, and then, then uh, he, he cuts a promo right right before his match with Traction, and he said. I'm ready to destroy the dreams of children. He, to he was. I'm gonna destroy 12, 13 year olds' dreams. <laughs> he was. He was in full blown. I know Anthony Pritchard uh, walked out because he didn't want to say uh, anything bad. Craig was just full blown heel right here. He, he was perfect. To be honest, I kind of think that Craig might have been putting on a bit. I mean, I think obviously, I think when the the bar was dropped on his fingers, that was genuine. Oh, but that was when he was when he was ripping something off. I don't. I think that might have just been him playing for the camera. Because <laughs> it didn't look like it looked like he was ripping open an old PC monitor, like an old PC like computer, whatever he was doing to it. But I don't know. I I mean. You, I mean, Nate. I mean, uh, Ren. You've met uh, Craig a few times. He, he's not like that in real life. He's he's there to have a laugh. He's a pleasure. Yeah, he's brilliant. But yeah, this sport is really stressful. So, a short team yeah. found out as well. Especially when you're working with such a monster of a robot like Apex. You got this huge blade. You got to make make sure uh, it's it's well balanced. It's maintained. It's the motor's running. It's a huge piece of kit. Yeah, and uh, well done, BBC, uh, BBC uh, production team, for uh, spoiling what happened on the website by posting a photo as the thumbnail of <laughs> the video of the bar flying away from Apex. Well done. I, I, I try to avoid spoilers. I don't visit the BBC site. The only time I decided to visit the site was uh, when uh, Apollo OOTA duck yeah, that was pretty much it. But yeah, it was, um, but there's not really much to say about that fight apart from this one moment. Uh, here, here, here's what I uh, wrote for the Apex versus Traction fight. Team Toad sticker, drink. Traction has Vulture Wedge. How dare you, Adam? You double-crossed Craig. You gave the kids your wedge to protect them from Craig. Well, I wanted to give them a chance. I mean... <laughs> Let's face it, no one expected that to happen. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't do the, the I mean, Robert Wars doesn't do awards anymore, but the, um, the, the groups online do, so, you know, you get nominated for the Sportsmanship Award at least. Hooray! Yeah, yeah <laughs> by spring over one of my favourite teams, and they're brilliant people. Craig yeah. actually lent us Tanso for the pilot of Series 1. Yeah, I heard about that. And, Tweedy and Sam were on my team. Sam um, had to move on to another team, which was uh, Foxic, I believe. Yeah, yep. and me and Tweedy were on the Tanzo team. Tweedy drove, I captained very poorly. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we've, we've been really close in the past, and I didn't really think when I heard the matchup between Draction and Apex, but I, saw, I turned, I saw the kids stressing out, they were panicking, and Will was struggling to do the minor repairs that were needed. And he had aftershock in pieces on his other table. Oh, yeah. So, Paul robots, right, to work they, they need a hand. They definitely need a hand. Yeah, it's not fair. So I went over to Will and I said, do you want to use our wedge? How heavy is it? 20 kilos? Do you think you can get that in weight? Yes. Adam, perfect. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the rest is it worked wonders. It, I will yeah. say that. I mean, I actually think traction looks better with that wedge on. Anyway, yeah, everyone's called traction's wedge now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, at least it was it was the right color as well. Yeah. 
Now, now, without spoiling anything, do they bring the wedge with them into the Tenway? I'm not allowed to answer that. Okay. I'll, I'll just I'll just say they they stuck Apex's blade on them or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my, my God. That <laughs> I was the, the again. Of, the rest of the notes I wrote. Blade fr- blade flies. Robot flies. Broke wall. Craig goes. What the hell? Not and Ice wrote. I don't think Apex will be going to Robo Games anytime soon because if he breaks uh, that panel, my God, David Calkins is going to flip. It. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think Apex may 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 get banned from a few events. It's like I remember there there was an uh, there was an event. Jesus, there was an event. I think it was in India a while ago, and uh, India is not they, really they the, had... Indi- the Indian robot scene is not really known for its uh, no. safety. Yeah, they, they, there was an accident where uh, uh, there was a vertical spinner versus some other bot, but the vertical spinner hit the other bot. A, a piece of the, the other bot goes oh, flying God, straight so- straight through the glass and whacks the driver in the head, knocking him out cold. So thank God this arena has two layers <laughs> because, Jesus, a- Apex Step Lay just went through it like a glass window. If, well, if, that, if this was... I fear to know what would have happened if he had entered it into one of the uh, uh, smaller events here in America. Like what I will I say is, the, what I will the, say. the Robo Games arenas had a few breaches, but uh, n- none that, uh, that to this effect. What I will say is, I mean, people might be saying, "Oh, the arena's unsafe because of the, this happened." The public, yeah. the bullet, it did its job. It stopped the blade. That's it, true. It really took a lot of momentum out of the blade when it hit it. It shattered it, but it did its job. Mm. So, and actually, funny thing is, that's the piece of uh, of uh, perspect that was broken last year by uh, aftershock. <laughs> so they, so that's, uh, it's the newest. It's the newest got, uh, that piece as a souvenir. It's the newest piece of polycarb, and it, it and it's the one that's been. It's, been, it's the first to get broken. You so, know what I think. Uh, you know what I think it is. Um, Basically, you have. I think it's it's because carbide and Apex's blades spin the same direction, and when, when you're when you're uh, driving, the drive pods uh, are over there. You've got the uh, the glass pane over there, so I'm sure the same amount of momentum was enough to send uh, the blade flying st- straight towards that same panel. I, it, there's a pattern going on here. But that, that was I a think, uh, that was because again I was there. For, that was a that was the holy shit moment. That, 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 I mean, that's definitely going in the holy shit moment uh, I mean, at the end. I mean, after the, I mean, after the, after the fight, like the buzzer went off because the, I mean, basically what immediately happened was the buzzer went off. Killalot just picked up um, Apex and put it in the pit because I think they just wanted to get it out of the way so it couldn't do any more harm. Yeah, it was like, and 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 Craig, I think Craig was upset because we're still moving and it's like, you no. idiots, you tried to kill everybody, you must pay now. Yeah, like you go in the bad, you go in the naughty spot. It's such a shame. I know. But what else could the Apex have done, really? Yeah, I mean, they, they could have. Uh, they could have just used the regular blade because it. it, it, uh, it... Well, <laughs> that was the, the regular blade. It I, I mean, the the, the Jeff yeah, Hardy too. blade. They could they could have used that. They could have gotten some nice hits in on uh, uh, Traction's tracks and probably could have had more more effect. At, the, the, the big problem with that blade is that it's just too big. <laughs> I don't know. But, but like, there was literally, when the buzzer went off, there was literally, like, just, like, 10, 20 seconds of just silence. Because no one knew really, really how to react to it. <laughs> like, the, the, crowd, the crowd weren't applauding. They were just, like, everyone was just dead silent. And... and and even like the uh, arena like um, host guy was he took him he spent about he, he took him about a minute before he could say anything because it was like you had produ- you had producers just, like you had the you had the, the the arena crew just running around like all panicking like holy shit what's happened <laughs> um uh you, like yeah yeah like the interview I think was like put off for about a good five minutes like just because they, they had no idea what to do. Because they had no idea this could happen. <laughs> oh, th- this <laughs> and it was amazing. <laughs> I will say, if if Craig had any detractors from Series Eight, 
I'm sure he's gained so many fans from this experience. I mean, I don't know what's, happen- what's going to happen to Apex now. I don't know if it's a write-off or anything like that. But, uh... well, well, Craig says he's working on a new machine right now. He has, uh, it looks like General Chomps a lot. It's got a, a crusher on the front. So may- may- he's going to try and work on this thing. But no. And uh, he's also bringing Foxic to Robo Games. So hopefully he'll have better luck for that. I wanted to, I wanted and of to... course... So I wanted to bring back Foxic for Series Eleven because I, I I like Foxic more than Apex because Foxic is a ge- like a, it's a generally really good looking machine in it. It it, in, it it has character to it. Apex just looks uh, like it it might uh, murder some and, somebody and, and in unlike the first and, and unlike the Series Eight egg, and unlike the Series Eight egg, uh, unlike the Series Eight Foxic it actually works as well. Absolutely, but yeah. <laughs> uh... I think we got we got to say it again. You, you know what we have to say, Alex. What? We got to give the good luck, Craig chant. Adam, you want to join us in saying good luck, Craig? Go on, Craig! <laughs> All right. On three. One, two, three. Good, good luck, luck, Craig. Craig. Uh, <laughs> don't get banned. Don't do the Jordan. Don't get banned. Don't get banned. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, but, I honestly do think that Apex probably could get banned for this. I was, I was actually, uh, I was talking to Craig. I was like, uh, I, w- I wanted to ask him if he could bring uh, w- one of his bots here so I could drive it in the heavyweight division. That's not happening now because of uh, how crazy registrations got. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> what, I mean I don't... it's not a letter. Shipping. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll, what, I mean, I'll, I'll spend you. I'll, I'll send. I'll send you three hundred pounds to ship it. I mean, what could? I mean, I mean, I don't know. What, there, there might be a lot of fallout to this. I mean, they could. They could put like a weight limit on butt on spinners, or you know, like how much you can weight you can put in a spinner, or I don't know, because there could be a lot of fallout from this. It it reminds me of I remember when they invited uh, Mauler over for the first world championship, and uh, then they found out it was too dangerous, and it's like. Holy crap, you people invite obviously didn't see Mauler on BattleBots, so you went ahead and invited them over anyway, and then you decided they're not safe for your, well, your Rinky Dink Arena. Happen, during the tech check procedure, they look at the robot and think, right, is anything going to fall off here? Yeah, that might come off. And, <laughs> and well, let's be honest, the Series 3 Robot Wars Arena didn't it? wasn't the safest. No. <laughs> I will say one thing. At least uh, the audience was well protected since they were like three stories up. <laughs> Not the camera crew, though. They, they, they were basically in the tiny, all the, all the tiny little box. It isn't good when the shrapnel flies upwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Ming will have something to say about that. So, yeah, that, um, that pretty much covers this match. <laughs> Apex versus versus Traction. We talked about this a good ten minutes. The, the match itself is only about 30 seconds. Yeah. So uh, I guess we'll move on to Adam, your bot, Vulture versus Bucky. You know what this reminds me of? I need to pace. Okay, you can go, Adam. No, Vulture versus Bucky. I skipped ahead yeah. a little bit. Um, you, you know what this match reminded me of? Um, it, it was like it was like watching a kids from MIT match, like overhaul versus saw blades. Just yeah. two big, tall, wack, wacky things just bumping into each other, grabbing onto each other, sawing into each other. It was it was actually I actually had fun with it. Actually, I was gonna say there's one moment like um I really uh, the, Bucky really got actually got a good bite in on uh, Vulture at one yeah, point. Yeah, I like that. Was yeah, it able to get through the armor? <laughs> Adam? Hello? Yeah. Was, Sorry, uh, Bucky, was, was Bucky's teat able to get through your armor? Well, I know. <laughs> um, you may have noticed on the front of Vulture that we've got a little mouth thing that's reminiscent of the featherweights. Yeah. Uh, when we got flipped over from the floor flipper, we sort of self-righted right into their gob. <laughs> and it swallowed us. Which wasn't very good. Yeah. And uh, re- really, uh, the, the floor flipper uh, 
Uh, obviously, that the thing uh, was breaking a lot in the last few seasons. It was going nuts in this episode. It yeah. it flipped you guys over. It flipped, and then it flipped Bucky over, well, and then that's well, pretty much it for Bucky. Well, I don't know if you noticed that uh, they actually removed because they actually put like side protectors on to on the um on the on the on the flipper this year. They were they were pretty much gone by the time this fight happened. <laughs> Well, uh, Aftershock decided, yeah, fuck these things, they're useless. Well, in the fi- they broke what the, the back one broke in the first fight uh, against with Beamoff and uh, Sabretooth. Uh, the the side one broke in the Aftershock fight, and I don't, I can't remember what happened to the other one. But yeah, they're basically just at the end. It's like, yeah, they're gone now. So just just stick some bungee cords under that thing, and you're good. Yeah, yeah, just like the original, but. So, so yeah, Adam, going into this match, what are your thoughts overall? Sorry? <laughs> Sorry. Blunt- yeah, blunt- 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 game. What are your thoughts on this match? Um, well, it, it was actually a good match because it was just, like, we both had sort of not great weapons or something like that. We're both inexperienced in the heavyweight categories. So... Yeah, it was just trying to outdrive each other and trying to make our gimmicky weapons somewhat useful. Um, sort of worked. Not for us, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got the win. You got a win. Yeah. You got, you got what, you, you know, you can, you can do, you can say you did better than uh, Terror Turtle or Velociripper. <laughs> who have never won. They scored a goal, though. Sorry. It, it's, it's fine, though. I'm I'm back, right? Yeah, yeah it, it's all good. Yeah, the, the, this this episode, it, it needs Nate. Nate Nate really really loves to ham everything up. Is this oh. Nate Frank, by chance? No, Nate Milbank. Uh, he, he's oh, uh, he's, your, he's, he's the co-host. Uh, he's the co-host. He's my comic relief. He he oh. usually records uh, all the audio and everything. So okay, but he had to. He he works on Sundays now. So yeah, but yeah. That's what happens. But yeah, yeah, Vulture gets bad at selecting guests on this show, then it would be perfect. Yeah. But you've got that tit from Team Vulture. Oh, come on. No. This whole episode, you've basically just been saying yourself, shut up. No, we did shit. No, I'm shit. Everything's shit. Shit, 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 shit. Don't don't be so down on yourself, man. I've got a reason to be robots. You built something that's unique. Hey, you can say you're yeah, but your robot you help you got you got you got it was you that basically helped um help traction beat a huge fuck off bar spinner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, ish. I think Apex beat itself really. No, it it was the sheer will of traction that caused Apex to break in half. <laughs> but yeah, Vulture gets the victory and go, goes uh, back into the semifinal rounds. So. Rapid versus Traction. Is this the shortest match of all time? It's got to beat Gravity's six seconds. And I think it might have. I think well, er- Eruption versus Cherub, uh, I believe, broke the record. That, no, that was, you, that was... Something that happened at the filming. Okay. Basically, it was just before we were going to the arena. And what we heard was, three, two, one, activate, cease. <laughs> it wow. was felt a lot quicker than six seconds i'll tell you that yeah i was gonna say three four maybe because <laughs> eruption was actually eruption was seven seconds so it is the second quickest i gotta say this this probably might be a record all right i got i gotta i gotta check the wiki the wiki is Let's probably see. updated but we, we gotta see how long well We're there's a clock the... In the, there's a clock at the side and it goes to five when 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 traction is clicked is flipped out Shortest battles in UK Robot Wars. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yes! Rapid versus Traction has beaten it by 5.6 seconds over Gravity and Dan Tom Kia, which was 5.8. So, yes, this is, in fact, the shortest Robot Wars match of all time. Hooray! But not the fastest immobilization. That's still Dominator on Henry II. That's still Dominator and Henry too. So, yeah, Ra- Rapid's a beast. Rapid now oh, holds the record. Gosh. How long that was a that record was what? Um, that record was uh, fifteen years old. Yeah, Gravity versus Dan Tom Kia. That was two thousand three. So it's 
14 years for this record to be broken. Yeah. And, and uh, if you want to go by the modern series, Eruption versus Cherub was 6.5. So this is also the quickest match of the modern series. So What if you go by all the events in general? Behind the scenes. Eruption, no, Eruption has that record. Don't they, have, don't they have the record? It was on Chronic, and that was four seconds. Yeah. I think... I think Chronic got um, I know out in four seconds as well. Hmm. Th- this is the uh, quickest televised match. Oh yeah, yeah. that's where it matters. Yeah. Also, I'm checking now, but Eruption has seven OOTAs. Dan Tomkia has nine. You th- you think Michael's going to break that record, Alex? Yes. Yeah, I think he is. Especially since he's in the ten way, he's probably going to flip out like at, l- at least three or four competitors. So, yeah. We'll see, we'll see what happens. He's the best driver in the sport, at least he in is. the UK. Well, yeah, he, he is. Although, again, he, he take again, like the Rapid team, he takes things seriously. Him, like, yeah, but he actually he puts on a show at least when he fights. Um, yeah. But that's what I'll say. It's like him and uh, Alex Brown from TRT are the two best drivers in the UK at the moment. I can't argue with that. I I, I want to see. I, I, it's obviously happened in a live event, but I would like to see them in like a, a TV a TV fight. Yeah. Have you ever seen the match between me and Mike? No. That was intense. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, I'd recommend watching it. It was It's all over the arena. It was in featherweights, though, so might not be that interesting. Was that one, no, it is. I love the featherweights, because feather, featherweights can really go flying. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, was, it, was it Explosion you were fighting against? Yeah, it was Amnesia versus Explosion, and... Jesus. <laughs> 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 When you're in the arena with a really powerful flipper that can flip you out from anywhere, what you need to do is just dodge and run and keep on it. And ex- if you let them get at you for a single second, you're out of the arena. And explosion and you put is them in the either because yeah. they can flip straight back out. Yeah. And explosion is dead fast as well. Yeah, yeah. It's like I've seen this little thing, and it can flip high. It can do all kinds of somersaults, all kind of wackiness. This thing is a little beast I, I think it's it's faster than quite a lot of heavyweights as well it's like it, it can nip around the arena like nothing so I, th- I think we talk boy we got off track there but uh we, we, we'll now move on to the semi-final mat the other semi-final match which is, which is Terra Hertz versus Vulture I have one word to say about this match ouch yeah. <laughs> just ouch <laughs> Adam uh and uh, what what they said, uh, John Reed, uh, you're a big fan of his, eh? Yeah. <laughs> How did those pillows work out? <laughs> well, they actually worked better than Rapids. <laughs> yeah. They held up, did yeah. the job, and they disappeared. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I Velcro is the new secret weapon of robot robot armor. Don't don't bother with bolts. Use Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says industrial, so it must be good. Yeah, industrial Velcro. So, so, uh, so, so this match is going going on. Like, what's going through through your guys' head right now? Like, oh my God, we're fighting terahertz. Uh, what are we gonna do? It, it was a really weird situation because you see a terahertz in the arena, you think, oh my God, I love this machine, it's awesome. And then you remember that you're in the arena with it, and then you go, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um. I will will say uh, the the good news is um, you managed to uh, go go the go uh, the distance and towards the end it looked like I don't know if uh, um, Nick was conserving CO two but the axe just wasn't working. It, no, it it just it, it, it ran out at the end. It, it yeah. fired it too much basically. And then what did we get? What did we get twice? We got the fog of war, the single worst hazard of all time. I do not like this. Like, I, not, and it's like, I don't know, uh, I believe each competitor is allowed one use of the button, I think, or but twice. Gabriel, Gabriel got two hits. Uh... Gabriel got two hits. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but like me and Alex said, th- th- this, this hazard is, it's a waste of time because... All the competitors have to just stop the matches so they can wait for it to go so they can finally see where they're going. Is it, is, is it random? And it it doesn't it... make good TV. To win that match, all, all we really could do with was the pit. 
Yeah. Or yeah. Even the actually, but mainly the pit. Because that's the one thing we're good at, getting stuff down the pit. And but did we get the pit? guys out of it. <laughs> but, like... I don't know, Rogue House Robot would have been interesting? Yeah, like, no. say, like, I don't know if it, is it randomly generated or what? I don't, I don't, is it randomly picked or like, who for, like, oh, Fog of War, that's good, let's, let's do that again, we gotta get our money's worth out of this, I mean, like, like use the Rogue House Robot, like, I would say if an Ariza Hazard has been used, and so, no, don't use it again. Apart from the yeah. Rogue House Robot, I don't, I don't know, maybe it, the Rogue it, House... it could be worse, it could be that the, the, you could press the button again and it raises the pit back up, like in that Behemoth Eruption Cobra match from last year. Yeah, I, I don't mind about that, I don't mind the, reason, the pit going back up, but um, I would say put, make, maybe make the Rogue House Robot go to 20 seconds instead of 10, because the Rogue House, the Rogue House Robot will, take, will use most of that time just getting to the other opponent. Yeah, well, I, I will say this though, it was really good to see Terahertz just... Go all out. Being just... terahertz, finally. Like this reminded me of like the terahertz Smidzy match from uh, Extreme Two, where Smith, where terahertz did not let Smidzy get away and just bash the shit out of it. And it was unfortunately your robot that was the ne- ne- this this the was the next Smidzy where he didn't let you go and he just battered the heaven loving hell out of you. You there, Adam? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've I've just noticed I've been oops, I've just noticed I've been <laughs> by the Boosie two well not by the Boosie two, but um to do with the um the loaning of the wedge. Yeah. The Boosie two posted um a gif of Dan from the traction team. Um Yay. Yay yeah, about their sportsmanship. I mean they, they are a really good team and like I'm really happy for them that they got through the ten way melee. Yeah. We can't really talk about yeah, that fight because because there wasn't one. Yeah, the fight didn't happen. What ha- what happened? Uh, you, you couldn't get uh, the weapon working. Or... Well, Cause... um, it, it sort of shows on the show, but it, it didn't really explain it. Basically, where where the weapon was designed to be, the, the head of the bird, as you might call it, it was um, sort of going over the wires for the drive motors, and it cut the uh, uh, can't even speak. It cut the wires on the motor so close to the can that there was nothing to solder to. Jeez. And to replace the motor, you have to take off the entire head of the vulture, which isn't good. It takes ages. So we thought, right, we'll try and repair it wherever it is. We got the back off, opened the motor, and Tom had a good crack at it. I mean, Jesus, if... If Tom wasn't on our team, we wouldn't have got as far as we did. He did all the work. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we just couldn't get it sorted in time. Um, we were rushing to get the motor back together once it was soldered. And then the motor just sort of gave way and snapped. Yeah, that was it. That was the now, end of our the design were, floor. Like that. Couldn't, couldn't you have been able to uh, just drive in and use the wedge, or was it, oh, oh you don't have an active weapon, so you have to forfeit? It, it was the drive motor that died. Oh, dang. So I wouldn't have been able to go forward. It would be 3, 2, 1, activate. Oh, they're getting counted out because they're not moving properly. Yeah, that Good. sucks, man. Because it's, it's, it's a rule, isn't it? You've you got to be able to at least drive to your starting spot, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Not good. Well, you know, it was a good first experience, though. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully, it can pick again. Yeah, hopefully, not, but it didn't come off that way from how you were, how the TV cut was. It was mostly you, you, you were all really, really, you were having a horrible time, and it was really stressful. Doing but, robots is stressful, but yeah. if it's something you love, then you got to take pride in your oh, work. Oh god, yeah. Just not vulture, because there's nothing to be proud of. <laughs> it's a beautiful mate. It's a really beautiful looking robot. Yeah. I, I, until you spot the welding. <laughs> And it's the first of its kind as well. At least in Robot Wars. Well, I mean, it, I mean, there's been overhead um, like saws before, but this is the first. Is this the first like actual flywheel spinner overhead? I actually, uh, there was one years and years and years ago that competed at Battle Beach in Florida. Pangol, not Pangolin. I forget what it was called, but it was like it had a big fuck off spinning disc that went a hundred degrees back and over, but. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember if it did well at all, but you know what? It, it's always good to see new and unique designs uh, like Vulture and Bucky and Robot Wars, and 
hey, you, you got to be on TV, you got to compete, you got to be proud of yourself. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> it was a brilliant experience, and the crew were really friendly. And, but, next, and next year just ends it with a boring wedge. Wedge. <laughs> it already is a wedge. Just wedge. Very well. <laughs> So, uh, at long last, we make it to the Heat final, which, which is Terahertz versus Rapid, and this was a hell of a fight. I've, I've, noticed, I've noticed that every episode now, the ones that have won the opening melee have won, have got to the Heat final. So, maybe yeah. that's a, that might be a flaw with the new format. I don't know. But... I, don't, I don't think so. It, it really depends on the quality of the builds, I think. Although, Be- Behemoth, you could argue, got a little bit lucky when it, when it got its win over Sabretooth and... Uh, Donald Thump, but um, I don't. I don't know. P- plus, I, I think uh, a lot of the losers have that extra match they have to go to, and maybe it takes a little bit out of the uh, competitors. But I, I don't know. But but yeah, this match. Uh, I, I I actually had terahertz. Uh, I, I, my prediction was terahertz was going to win, but I did have a feeling that Rabbit was going to be able to just get underneath terahertz and flip it around and. Basically, that's what it did. Well, but... if, if you know, if you know, it's terahertz had, had the problem. Uh, the wheelie bar was supposed to fix this, but it didn't. Uh, it didn't properly. Uh, when it drove forward, it, it the front wedge lifted off the ground. Yeah, and uh, t- terahertz, uh, it, it it did well to stay in there for the most part. Like it almost went flying out, but it stayed in. It ended up in the CPZ. It got a few hits in on Rapid. The little pillow or whatever uh, got knocked off. It was hanging in there, but then Rapid just got underneath it, just sent it straight across the arena and over and out. So, so the good news is Terahertz makes it through to the uh, ten way, so it's not out of it yet. And and Rapid makes it through to the grand final. And so far, I think it's the dark horse to win. But uh, I don't know, Behemoth, Carbide, Rapid. Anything can happen. If it's those three drawn together, I don't know if I don't know. Uh, I think Rapid and uh, Beam Off would have to team up on Carbide to take to take it out. That's that sounds like that's what's going to happen. So, but yeah, you you know what? This episode wasn't as good as the first two, but I will say it certainly had moments. I I loved uh, a lot of the new designs, even if they didn't all work. But and um, it had a good heat final and. Um, it, rapid as bland as it may look it is a powerful machine and it is good to see it go through to the grand final and not not pull a mortis as nate would say well but, it, uh, no, it is pulling a mortis because mortis did really well in its second series well yeah but it didn't it didn't uh it wasn't through to the grand final it was only the semi-final because there aren't any semi-finals well there are that you got semi-finals in the heats I don't know, but uh, oh, there were a few match. Well, there were a few matches that I think fell kind of flat. But uh, I, I did, and obviously the uh, trap. It, it was the the uh, it, some of them. Some of them didn't even last a minute. But uh, overall, if I were to give it a score from one to ten, I'll give it a six. I would agree with you. I'll probably give it a, like a six point five or seven. Um, it's got, I mean, it's definitely got some good moments. I mean, you've got the shortest fight in Roll Wars history. You've got the the apex explosion. Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, it's. Series 10 is really shaping up to be the best series of Rebel Wars ever. Like, I, I would already yeah, say. It really is. I, I gotta be honest. I mean, it's, it's, it's already better. It's the best reboot series. Absolutely. Already. Like, I, I've seen a lot of shitty reboots, but. This is probably the best rebooted show since Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah. Well, Doctor Who. <laughs> I, since what, Doctor Who, it, it, it's going to keep going forever. It, well, until they cancel it again. <laughs> well, they've got such a massive fandom, so... <laughs> yeah, well. They won't let it drop. So, Adam, on a scale of 1 to 10, what would you give this episode? It, it obviously isn't as good as the other episodes because you had some corkers of fights, um, but it's it's really hard to judge an episode that you're actually in because you're just going to look back at your own fights or anything that you're in, seeing your face on TV and going, oh, get that off the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
everyone was awesome. Everyone was so nice. Everyone was stressed, as you can understand. Mm. But it, to experience it and know what went on, you think, wow, that's just... Jesus. <laughs> and then you see it on TV. A lot of the drama's cut out. And you don't see as much of everyone's heart being poured into it. But it, it is entertaining seeing the matches. And I'm just babbling on. It, mm. I, I honestly can't rate it. It's but, unraceable. <laughs> pretty much. It, it's an unraceable episode for me. Okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't rate it very high because I've seen my face in it. <laughs> Something I want to forget. I got its head kicked in. <laughs> but there are some brilliant fights, and it's not really about the robots in this episode. It's more of the personalities. This is see. this is a team episode. I know. Yeah, a bit looking back, it's more of a team episode. Like you, you got Bucky, you got Traction, you got the Vulture, you got Apex. Really, I mean, and Terra Hertz was. I mean, it's, it's great to see Terra uh, to see John Reed having a good time. At, um, for one, uh, and uh, I mean. There wasn't really much to say about the rapid team, but you know. But they're yeah. they're they're they're, they're going to keep they're going to keep going until they finally win this beast. But uh, it's like the Apprentice of Robot Wars when someone beats them, that's when they get a job. They give them a job, <laughs> and then they'll go on to become the president. You know what? That Make was Robot really... Wars great again. <laughs> we were really hoping we'd fight uh, Rapid in our second, our second, third match. So yeah, we were. We were actually quite surprised when we got mashed up with Terrorheads again because that hadn't happened yet in that series. Mm. And it was disappointing because Terrorheads we weren't really suited for. Like we thought, oh yeah, everything's flippers and spinners and all that. We'll put a big massive thick wedge on. We'll have another thin wedge of some special low wedge that gets stuck in the floor. <laughs> um, top armour was really, really thin because we thought, nah, there's too much weapon in the way. No one will hit that. What happened? Terror hurts happened. Yeah. <laughs> there's only two. There's only two axes in rubber. Was it's not like they're going to draw us against it? Oh shit! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, rapid. What could have stood a chance against, especially with the drive like being sorted. You, you would have noticed the difference between round one and two and three. Vulture was a lot quicker. Yeah, it was. And it's known in the featherweights for being one of the lowest. And I tell you what, the heavyweights was not, you know, exempt from this. It was really low. So we know we could have gotten underneath Rapid. Whether or not we could have stayed in the arena, that's an entirely different story. Well, well from what I've read about Rapid is Rapid's, uh, the flipper actually isn't flush to the floor. It's got, it's got, it's got to have the sides to it to get under, it, get under them first. Yeah, it's sort of hovering. We have a special little, well, we had a special little wedgelet that was longer than the others. So it would have missed out Rapid's side corner wedges and went straight underneath the middle wide wedge yeah it would be perfect we could have caused them so much hassle but no, <laughs> no. they could it's could've... another case of shoulda coulda woulda yeah you but... could have beat them I mean they had a gas leak <laughs> well, you, know, you, you never know what's going to happen that's the thing about robot combat in general you never know what's going to happen you, know, you never know when you'll either get struck by a floor spike or or your robot craps out while you're fighting a Spongebob Squarepants pinata. Yeah. <laughs> Which happened to me. And all I'll say is all I'll say is in these next time trailers, they've always previewed the robot that's won the heat because it was Apex, uh, sorry, it was it was Carbide and then it was Rapid. So by that logic, that means Nuts is going to win the heat next week. Woo! About time. Yeah, ne next week uh, is Heat 4. We're going to have uh, Tim from Concussion and Alex Shaky Shakespeare from Nuts 2. They're going to have on as guests, and we're going to talk to them about their experience. The melty brains and everything. Yes. Robots in are Androne 4000, the ever-powerful Iron Aw 6, the ever-wacky Nuts 2, the ever-bull-by-the-horns Tauron, the ever intoxicated kegs and the number five seed concussion should be a fun episode alex do you have a prediction on who uh, might win heat four and no spoilers please just give a prediction prediction is it's probably it's going to be between iron or six and concussion concussion but i can say yeah. that you've seen nuts in the preview don't write it off 
Well, you I saw would... Apex in the preview for the last episode, so yeah. I I actually turn I actually turned uh, the uh, stream off because I didn't want to see the previews for the next episode. <laughs> I am, I, I am dedicated. No spoilers filter. for me, please. <laughs> Except that it's one time. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was uh, good having you on, Adam. I, I know things didn't really uh, play up for you, but it, it was always cool. And uh, Vulture is a pretty interesting design. I, I want to see you uh, advance it a bit more yeah. so you can have a, a really nasty spinner that just slices a bot in half. Well, if they go to calling the plan where they're, originally there were going to be lightweights in Series 10, hope, if this is series, when there's a Series 11, if they bring lightweights into that, then you can have two shots. I so want them to have beetle weights. That I would, I would if they if they say, oh, we're gonna have beetle weights. I'm I don't care how much it's gonna cost me. I'm gonna ship Mondo over there, and I'm gonna. Well, the, BB, have the fun BBC, with you guys. I agree. There's one problem with that, mate. The What's macro that? is not good enough. Yeah. What? <laughs> the macro is not good enough on the cameras. Yeah. Damn it. The, uh, <laughs> and actually, actually, from what I found out, the BBC do pay for travel. Woo! They do indeed. Yeah. But as know. soon as you lose, get the fuck out of your hotel. <laughs> yeah, the BBC were awesome. Men's fun were awesome. And yeah. honestly, if you want to give it a shot, if you want to apply, and do it. Do yeah, it. just do it. You will get all the support you'll ever hope for from the crew. They're brilliant. Yeah. Awesome. What are you going to lose? I mean, the worst they're going to say is no. <laughs> oh, oh, oh what, what's that? Your robot has a flipper? No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was a uh, this was a fun fun episode. Uh, it was it was good uh, having you back, Alex. And uh, it was good I'm having Alex here. Students. I'll never leave. <laughs> and uh, yeah, originally he, we were just gonna have him for like heat B or something, and so far he's been in every episode so far. I've been your emergency guy. Yes. But yeah, <laughs> it was good. It was good to, talking to you, Adam. It was a. No uh, it was fun time. Nice. Fun talking about bots. And, uh, like to guess, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully uh, this uh, I don't have to do a lot of editing. I've, I've got my camera here and Alex has uh, OBS going, so hopefully it won't be a catastrophe like it was last time. <laughs> Here's hoping. Yes. But until, the, until next week, I am the Hardcore Kid. And I am Alex the Hunted, and I don't think Adam has a pseudonym. I'm the random guy. He is the he is the vulture guy. <laughs> Peace out and cease. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye. Woo. Fuck the revival.